Yo, what's up guys? I'm Insanin, and today we got part two of Biomega Explained. I'm here repping my favorite Biomega cover because Nia Rudy is one sexy gal. Make sure you watch part one if it's not fresh in your mind because I'm not gonna repeat myself in the video and you have to remember everything that was in part one. Also realize that this is my interpretation of the story. Biomega, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated mangas of all time. And people's biggest complaint about it is that it's confusing and they get lost and don't understand it. So these videos are really just to help you guys enjoy the story more during your future read-throughs. So pay attention in the video and let's get started. First, let's talk about accommodators. Accommodators are people who are infected with the N5S virus and whose cells are dronified, but still retain their normal external appearance and sense of self. A small percentage of the human population fits this category. However, the individuals with 24 pairs of chromosomes that are immortal and secrete particles resembling plant pollen like Berudo and Viev Chiana, aka Eon Green, are different from accommodators. These individuals are naturally immune to the N5S virus. Now let's talk about the quasi-N5S virus, aka quasi-N5SV. When the ship that returned to Earth with drones had its accident in orbit, the DRF immediately recovered the wreckage that fell into the Pacific Ocean. This is how they got a head start on researching the N5SV. They had access to technology, giving them the ability to create a quasi-N5SV that gives the user immunity to the regular N5SV, enhanced physical and mental abilities, regeneration qualities, and most likely an incredibly long lifespan, if not immortality itself. This quasi-N5SV has no parasites involved with it. They did this by unlocking the secrets of the dronified cells, and most likely the secret behind the accommodators. They were able to manufacture this and distribute it to certain individuals and locations in a very short period of time. There's evidence that more than one version of the quasi-N5SV exists, as the DRF factions are constantly trying to improve it, and early versions seem to have adverse mental side effects. We also know that adequate masks will protect you from N5SV infection. With this information, it's safe to say that everyone you see in the DRF who is not infected is either an accommodator, stayed safe due to masks, took a quasi N5SV, is a synthetic human slash cyborg, or has some other special powers slash body modifications that make them immune. Okay, now let's talk about what's really going on in Biomega. The story follows three main factions. Faction 1 is Toa Heavy Industries, which includes the synthetic human and artificial intelligence pairs that were created in order to counter the DRF. Toa Heavy Industry is a company that seems to have humanity's best interests in mind. The pairs we talked about include Zoichi and Fuyu, who are on a mission to save and protect accommodators because they might be humanity's last hope for survival following the current epidemic. The pair Go and Tira are investigating the research and experiments that the DRF is doing with the N5SV. In the last pair, Nishu and Shin are looking for Leif Grebneb, the original founder of the DRF who is rumored to still be alive today. Factions 2 and 3 are both in the Data Recovery Foundation, aka DRF, and share common interests with the exception of some specific details which we'll talk about. Faction 2 is Narain and his followers, which include the Public Health Service, aka PHS, and their Compulsory Execution Unit, aka CEU, which are both subsidiary parts of the DRF. Examples are the first patrol inspector we meet, Hagid, who is a straight badass, Kotaru, who has psychic powers and looks like this in normal form, and Dr. Wadenstein, who assists in experiments and weapon development. Narain's main location is the stronghold MSCF-3, which is also where the mooring line to the Continental Geostationary Satellite is. Narain's goal is immortality for humanity, which he says was Leaf's original goal when he started the DRF. He seems unsure of the exact way to make this happen, but is searching for answers by researching the various components of the N5SV and accommodators. This faction holds a large amount of power within the DRF, but splits off from them once they betray Nia Rudy in DRF headquarters. Faction 3 is Nia Rudy and her followers, which include DRF Headquarters personnel, the Guardian of the Left and Guardian of the Right, the inspectors she sends to assist and spy on Narain, and most likely the majority of the DRF around the world, considering she is the matriarch and leader of the organization. 
Niarudi's goal is to be all-powerful and build a new world order that is free of certain technology and artificial creations. Why, you ask? Because Niarudi's powers only work on organic slash living things. If she wants to be all-powerful, she needs to get rid of everything else, especially man-made things and artificial intelligence whom she has no sway over. So how is she going to do this? This is a good time to discuss everything pertaining to the recreator and reverse morphic polymer, which if you recall, Nia Rudy learned about when she analyzed what is most likely a source of Ruido's pollen in the past. The reverse morphic polymer is the polymer forming the particles of the pollen that the 24 chromosome pair of mortals discharge, and in all likelihood is also the polymer forming the particles of the ovules created by the parasites that caused the drone epidemic since the drones are used as a form of medium and catalyst for the polymer. We see Niarudi use this knowledge to her advantage to spread the mass that it creates all over the world. The reverse morphic polymer reacts to non-living materials and absorbs them as it reconfigures their base matter. It converts everything it absorbs and rewrites it in accordance with a code. Once the ovules created by the parasites causing the drone epidemic within the reverse morphic polymer mass are pollinated, a plant called the recreator is born that uses the information of everything that has been absorbed by the polymer and creates whatever the host desires with it, or in other words, grants someone's wish. I believe Nia Rudy's intentions are to have the reverse morphic polymer absorb every non-living thing on earth and then make a wish that gets rid of it, creating a new world where everything that exists is subject to her powers. Now, it's obvious that the exact mechanics behind this phenomenon are shrouded in mystery even to Nia Rudy, as her wish isn't the one granted when the recreator is born, but we'll get to that later. Also, realize that Nia Rudy might not have advertised all of her true intentions to the entire DRF, and that most members were probably following orders on the basis of surviving this epidemic and coming out on top as the leading world power afterwards. Okay, so we set up the major players of the plot and their intentions. Now let's streamline through the events that aren't self-explanatory. The first patrol inspector we meet takes a quasi N5S V that's responsible for his transformation in his fight against Soichi. Once Narain gathered a sufficient number of accommodators, he had all the materials needed to move forward with his research and tries using intercontinental ballistic missiles, aka ICBMs, to destroy Toa Heavy Industry facilities, the company who is the DRF's biggest threat, and major population cities around the world. This fails since Soichi and Fuyu successfully shoot them all down. However, now everyone knows the DRF is trying to take over the world, but there seems little they can do about it. The N5S virus has reached almost everywhere by this point, and the DRF are the ones who saw it coming and prepared for it, giving them an advantage that leads to them defeating any army that rises against them. The chapter interlink that happens at the end of Volume 1 shows Go and Tira, who have just destroyed a DRF laboratory and stolen a quasi N5S V. Hagid ends up killing Go but not before he sends off a rocket with both Tira and the quasi N5SV on it. Tira later communicates with Kozlov and he picks up the contents of that rocket. Okay, then the CEU takes over Toa Heavy Industry headquarters and kidnaps Dr. Kurokawa for his knowledge of synthetic humans and weapons such as the 4000 XL that Zoichi used to shoot down the ICVMs on Island 9J0. Zoichi shows up to Toa Heavy Industries too late to save anyone and ends up self-destructing the headquarters. This is when the PHS confirms the spread of the drone epidemic across the entire planet and the DRF declares itself the sole world government power. Zoichi and Fuyu head to MSCF 57 where they find the vessel that had taken Eon Green away from Island 9J0. After investigating, Fuyu learns that Eon Green is actually at the Continental Geostationary Satellite Mooring Lines location aka MFCF3, where Narain is. Zoichi and Fuyu have a run-in with Kataru, but get away. Now, Nia Rudy is suspicious of Narain and sends four inspectors to his location at MSCF3, one of which breaks off along the way to track down Zoichi. Zoichi defeats him, but not without taking an attack that delivered a poison impairing his system. He later runs into Kataru again, who is actually disguised as a harmless civilian. When she reveals herself, she says they have found a true accommodator, which led to the human species general conversion plan finally being ready and that the Mars research will be completed soon. This is important because the true accommodator she is referring to is actually the 24 chromosome pair immortal Eon Green, aka VF Chiana. 
I take the rest of her statement to mean that Narain now has all the ingredients he needs to fulfill his plan and that he'll soon discover the secrets to immortality. This is most likely when he creates the perfect quasi N5SV slash drug that his synthetic human counterpart takes later in the story, but we'll get to that later. After this talk, Kaoru shoots Zoichi with something that neutralizes the poison impairing his systems and she escapes. Moving on, one of the inspectors sent by Niarudi sneaks around and finds the synthetic bodies that Narain is experimenting with, as well as the kidnapped Dr. Kurakawa, who appears to have had surgery performed on him. They most likely brainwashed him to help them with their synthetic human and weapon development. The inspector on Niarudi's side informs them that this type of research is not allowed, but Narain knocks him out. We see that Narain has killed the other two inspectors that Niarudi sent, and Hagid kills the one who is sneaking around in a duel soon after. We see DRF headquarters learn about these events and Niarudi finds out about Narain's betrayal. To stop Narain from having any more time to reach his goals, Niarudi puts her plan into action and starts spreading the reverse morphic polymer all over the world. We see this firsthand in the Ajitsa district when Nishu and company meet up with Doc and fight against the DRF forces. Niarudi then starts heading to MSCF3 to deal with Narain. Once Narain sees that Niarudi has started her plan, he prepares for battle and it doesn't take long for these two factions to start going at it. Dr. Wildenstein whips out an accelerator weapon that uses brain waves that he completed with Dr. Kurokawa's help, but it's a giant screw up and fails in a pretty humorous fashion. The white angel-like things and mechas on Niarudi's side are most likely machines with AI or are controlled by people inside or remotely somewhere else. Niarudi shows up in flying vessels with bio armor that will prevent the reverse morphic polymer from affecting them. Her DRF headquarters forces easily overwhelm Narain's PHS and CEU forces, and she infiltrates MFCF3 with ease. This order to kill Eon Green once she has been located may seem confusing since her pollen is crucial to the birth of the recreator, which means Niarudi must have either expected Eon Green's pollen to work dead or alive, or figured her pollen was unnecessary since she has possession of some of Rurudo's pollen that she stole a long time ago. Okay. Here's where things get a little trippy, so we're going to slow down a bit. Narain transfers his mind over to a synthetic human using a brain transfer system. So now Narain has two existences. The plan was to destroy his previous brain once the mind transfer was complete. However, Nia Rudy busts in before that can happen. Nia Rudy and original Narain have an important conversation where their opposing intentions for the human race we discussed earlier are revealed. Narain wanted immortality, while Nia Rudi wanted to build a new world order where she was all powerful. She orders a soldier to shoot synthetic human Narain, which we soon find out didn't actually kill him, and the original Narain dies soon after. They also shoot Dr. Wildenstein, but he recovers, revealing that he's taken a new quasi N5SV that has minimal adverse effects on the brain. He says they'll soon perfect a drug that makes flesh immortal while keeping people's memories intact. It's sort of unclear whether the drug he just referenced is different from the new quasi N5SV that he took himself, but either way, he administers one of these things to the synthetic human Narain, not knowing what the outcome will be. The Guardian of the Right kills Wildenstein, and synthetic human Narain lets off a catastrophic brainwave blasting a hold of the outside. Nia Rudy gets away and starts ejecting containers of drones to be used as the catalyst for the reverse morphic polymer. What happens next is pretty freaking crazy, but the best theory I could come up with is as follows. Narain unlocked the secrets to immortality following experiments with both the dronified cells of N5SV victims and the immortal Eon Green. He uses his synthetic human body with beefed up psychic abilities he gained by taking the new drug slash quasi N5SV that they engineered following their new experiments and is transforming the drones into immortals with their original appearance. This is why Nia Rudi freaks out when she sees this. She knows Narain has reached his goal of discovering a way of immortality for the human race. In case you didn't notice, Narain's psychic powers are usually used in a twisting slash spiral fashion. The shape of DNA which houses genes is a double helix which is also a twisted slash spiral shape and it was previously mentioned that the parasites turn people into drones by rewriting their genes. He discovered the secret and is now using his psychic powers to rewrite the DNA of the drones in a fashion that makes them immortal with their original appearance. He's probably having their DNA mimic what would happen to them if they took the new perfected drug. 
I know this is pretty out there, so if you don't agree with this, then come up with a different theory that works in your head. Anyway, Nierudi releases the reverse morphic polymer onto the drone she dropped, and the mass that forms using the drones as a catalyst engulfs the entire area, including Narain. He starts freaking out and forming a cyclone of brainwave energy. Fuyu synchronizes with Narain's brain, mentioning that Dr. Kurokawa's knowledge must have been used in one way or another on the synthetic human Narain transferred his mind over to. Fuyu and the synthetic humans from Toa Heavy Industry were designed by Dr. Kurokawa as well, so this makes sense. Fuyu comments that the rapid reproduction has made Narain's brain incredibly unstable. This is most likely due to the new drug slash perfect quasi N5S feed that was administered to him. Narain warns Fuyu of not letting Eon Green near the reverse morphic polymer until Nia Rudy is eliminated. Narain is afraid of Nia Rudy using her powers on the recreator to have her own wish be granted once the ovules of the mass being formed are pollinated with Eon Green's pollen. Next thing we know, we have Narain and Nia Rudy rising up towards everyone else trying to make it to the continental geostationary satellite for safety. An important conversation happens between Narain and Fuyu that was covered in part one of this series, and then we see further proof of Nia Rudy's distaste towards man-made things as she enters the conversation through Narain. Narain attempts to kill Nia Rudy, but she reveals her method to pollinate the ovules below with the source of Arudo's pollen that she stole from the locket and leaf's room in the past. I know Narain refers to this as a seed, but how Nia Rudy uses it in the story and her intent with it indicate that it's actually a source of Rurudo's pollen. Luckily though, that pollen spore gets destroyed by the group Kozlov is with. Next, something happens in this panel with Nia Rudy, because the next thing we see, she is shot by Zoichi, however it's clear she took over Narain's mind before that shot was delivered. Her spirit matter starts coming out of Narain's head, and Fuyu sees that Nia Rudy has taken control. This can be attributed to the fact that the synthetic humans have a certain degree of biological aspects to them, especially Narain's mind in this case, otherwise Nia Rudy would have no power over them. They end up falling down, and Nia Rudy shoots a controlled brainwave towards the transport that Eon Green is on in an attempt to scatter Eon Green's pollen. It's first reflected by Nishu, and finally dissipated by Kataru. However, this might have just been a diversion, because a mass that was most likely shot off of the stalk that Nia Rudy and Narain were using to climb earlier springs toward Eon Green. We see spirit matter coming out of it, indicating it's under Nia Rudy's control. It rips a hole in the transport, and we see Eon Green's pollen sprinkle out. Nia Rudy says she's done with Narain's synthetic human body, but not before forming a massive swirl of brainwave energy. As she leaves Narain's mind, if you look closely, you can tell that the direction of the brain waves she's formed actually flips upside down. This explains what happens next as the brain wave shoots down through Narain's body, into the earth, and out of the opposite side of the earth, killing Narain in the process. Next we see the ovules from the giant mass that the reverse morphic polymer has formed absorb the pollen that fell from Eon Green. With the conditions met, the recreator discussed earlier starts to germinate. Fuyu transfers the key to the Continental Geostationary Satellite over to Shin as we learn that Narain snagged it from Nia Rudy's memory while their minds were connected and gave it to Fuyu before he was destroyed. They look on, not knowing whose wish will be granted, and the recreator starts to form from the mass created by the reverse morphic polymer using drones as a catalyst that covers a large portion of the planet at this point. It shoots out from the Earth past the Continental Geostationary Satellite and heading towards outer space. We later learn that it was Kozlov's wish that was actually granted, and the rest of the story will be explained in part 3 of the series. Alright, repping volume 6 now, because it's my second most favorite cover in Biomega series, and it's good foretelling for what's going to be talked about in part 3 when we finish the series up. Hope you guys got something out of the video. Don't forget, I'm not trying to pretend like I know exactly what's going on in Sutoma Nihei's head. These videos are purely just to help you guys understand the story and enjoy it more. And if you don't believe every opinion and theory I have, hopefully these can help you come to your own theories and opinions for your own interpretation of the story. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. And stay tall, heavy tough. I'll see you next time. Peace.